new bike day is uh, probably the best day you can get as a mountain biker. Mountain biking is fantastic, as you all know, but getting a new piece of equipment to enjoy and learn and uh, see benefits and well, pros and cons in different places, it's quite exciting and it's like having a complete refresh for your riding. So new bike for me involves the DV8 Highlander 2. Uh, the fact that it's number two suggests that there was one before. If you follow the channel, you know I had the original and I still have the DV8 Claymore, the more enduro version of all their bikes. This is their do-it-all trail bike. It's a 145 mil travel at the back, 160 up front, 29 are front and rear. And it's the bike that they reckon that most people need for most riding situations. If you want to go more specific in the other direction, maybe you'll look at other options. But for general riding, especially in the UK, the Highlander ticks most off the boxes. So the new version comes in four sizes. Uh, that's an extra one. They've added the small now. So you've got small, medium, large and extra large. Uh, I have gone for the large. I am just under six foot one. I prefer my bikes a little bit smaller and more playful. Uh, yeah, you'll be able to decide based on how you like things, but uh, just under six foot one, liking a playful bike, I find the large perfect. They also do two colours. This is Atlantic Blue, uh, and I chose this one because it has the lovely orange decals on it, which are a good match for the Fox Factory uh, orange that I also have on the bike. The other option is called Isla Sand, and it's a lovely colour. Um, but for me it looks too much like a Santa Cruz and I want people to know that I'm not on a Santa Cruz, I'm on a DV8. It's also probably worth noting that I am supported by DV8, so this is a bike check. I'm not going to express too many opinions, uh, and but if I do, they will be quite nice. I do love these bikes, but I might be quite biased, so if you are interested in one of these bikes, leave this video afterwards and go and look for reviews online, uh, videos, or even better, see if you can find one in the flesh and get a demo. Uh, there's no substitute for trying the bike to know if it suits what you want from a bike rather than just listening to other people's opinions. But my opinion is it's fantastic. So as the title suggests, it's a Highlander 2, so it's a revision of the Highlander 1. Deviate are quite clear, it's not a, a revolution, it's just an evolution of their old bike. So if you have the Highlander one, you, you'd be hard pushed to really want to sell that to get the new one. Yes, it is better, there are some changes, but it's not like the Highlander's become a bad bike now that this is out. So I don't know all the facts and figures off the top of my head, and I'm not too bothered about that either. If you want to know the proper figures and the size charts, then go on to DV8's website, the link's in the description. You'll get to know everything you need to know right there. What I do know, however, is they slackened the head angle slightly compared to the old Highlander. They have beefed up the seat tube from a 31.6 to a 34.9, just making this whole area much stronger here. They have steepened the seat angle, I believe, by two degrees, which I, for one, really, really enjoy because uh, my hips don't get quite as sore when they're a bit more over the pedals. Uh, I'm not sure about going any steeper than this, but I do notice the two degrees steeper seat tube angle, and it does help me quite a bit. Uh, they've obviously got the new colours, they've got slightly different cable routing. We now have a rear triangle much more similar to the DV8 Claymore, where it actually has some internal cable routing on it. We also have the addition of a carbon fibre bash guard down the bottom, which is a bolt-on number, so you can remove it easily to clean underneath it and whatnot. The previous one just had the kind of rubber protection on it. And finally, if you don't know much about DV8 frames, uh, they're all high pivot, as you can see here, and they do have this extra idler cog, which helps stop the chain from stretching and snapping because the rear rearward axle path moves back about an inch through its travel. And I'm not gonna talk too much about the high pivot point or the idler, because there shouldn't be too much of a faff made about these things. Uh, the previous Highlander that I had, I wore out my cassette before I wore anything else out. So the chain, the relatively low chain wrap on the chain ring, and the idler cog 
did not cause me any problems. The first things to wear out were the three lowest gears on the cassette. So that tells you all you need to know. I had no problems with it, no noise, no perceivable drag, uh, quiet, uh, no drop chains. So yeah, it's a complete non-issue. And the high pivot, I think I've just got used to it now. Um, I haven't ridden too many conventional bikes since. I don't notice the difference, but if you are used to a regular bike coming over to it, perhaps you will. Pros and cons, the pros being it should carry more speed over high speed bumps um, as the rear wheel moves back and out the way in line with the forces that are coming at it from the trail. Uh, that makes it carry more speed, makes it slightly less jarring. Uh, but then the other side of that is when you put brakes on it tends to make it sit a little bit more into its travel the actual brake force does make the suspension compress this can be good for steeper descents where it will squat the back end down and make your bike attack a steeper descent better uh, but if you're going over bumps it can make it a little bit more jarring than a regular suspension setup so it just depends uh, what you're going to be riding most often and how you like your bike to feel and then the final things on the frame are the three hardware mounting points within the rear triangle, the one up here as well, uh, and that's really quite handy. I can get two water bottles and some kind of accessory mount up the front or however way you want to portray it, but that's really quite good. And that all ties in with this uh, recess, this channel on the underside of the top tube, which is technically where your external cables are mounted. So out of sight, out of mind, but easy to work on if you need to. And the bolts that hold it all down together are they happen to be accessory mount spacing so you can get whatever accessories or bottles you want on there as well, which I think is really quite handy. So as I said, my other bike is the Claymore, the kind of heavy hitting enduro bike. It's got a 170 mil fork on the front, although I might change it to 180 now, and 165 mil at the back. Uh, that thing is an absolute monster for what, when you're charging through uh, the really chunky stuff. So what I wanted to do with this Highlander was try and make it much towards the other end of the scale and build it as light as possible to make it far more at the trail bike end of the scale rather than the do-it-all mountain bike. So the main way I've done that is by going for lighter weight wheels and tyres and that really has made quite a big difference to this bike. My previous Highlander I tried to build at the more enduro end of the scale because that was the only bike I had and I needed something more capable for the mountains but now that I've got the Claymore this has gone the other way. So the wheels are Industry 9 Trail S wheels with the Hydra hubs which sound like this. Now I've never been too bothered about uh, the sound that these make. I don't find it annoying. Uh, let me know in future videos if you do find it annoying. I can always put some more grease in. But I do appreciate those extra bite points on the engagement and the hub, which really helps for technical climbing. These wheels also happen to be over 600 grams lighter than the Hope Fortis Enduro wheel set I had before which just helps for less unsprung mass, uh, a bit quicker to accelerate and decelerate, and just makes the bike feel a lot more peppy. But the biggest difference is the tires. I've gone for the first time ever to Continental. Um, these are the Crypto Tiles. They're kind of all rounder tire. Uh, I've come away from Michelin. Uh, the Michelins with the race line additions I had were over 1400 grams per tire, which is extremely heavy. Very, very tough um, and very grippy because of the soft compound. But these things are about 400 grams lighter per tire and add that to the 600 grams lighter per wheels. And the bike feels so different to the way the Claymore felt and the way my original Highlander felt. These are also the trail casing. That's why they're so light. That's the lightest casing that they do and they are the endurance compound. So they're not gonna be quite as grippy or tacky because they're not soft, uh, but they do roll exceptionally fast. So the second most prominent thing that makes this bike feel the way it does is the fact that I've got air uh, suspension both front and rear. My other two DV8 bikes have been coil suspension at the rear. Um, and whilst that is fantastic, 
it's less tunable than air is. So I've went very much overkill and went for a Fox X2 shock. This thing is more in line for downhill and whatnot. I then have all the ability to make as much changes as possible to fine tune this bike to the way that I want. The forks are Fox 36 factories. This is what I've ran on my previous Highlander. Uh, and I think it's more of an appropriate choice for this kind of bike. Again, it's air and it has all the adjustments you could ever want. I'm still messing about with proper settings on these with the damping and the rebound, uh, but I do have all the tokens in, in the air chambers. So I do know that I want to make this feel as taut and supportive as possible. So I've added all the tokens in uh, and that's another thing that just makes it less supple but more supportive and just feel different to bikes I've had in the past. Beyond that though, everything is very similar to what I've run on previous bikes and for good reason. So contact points, uh, I've got one-up components, flat pedals, I run them on my other bikes. So it's nice just to have that same feel, that consistent feel going from one bike to another. The same is true for the stem, mm, not quite. I've run this stem before, so it's a Bergtec 35mm reach, 35mm clamp, uh, Mark III stem. I think it's a really nice looking stem, although stems are not that complicated. Uh, I've tied that in with a Bergtec uh, alloy enduro bar, although this time I've cut it down to 780 wide rather than the usual 800 and I may go slightly narrower just because I feel that's more trail appropriate. And then the final contact points are the Ergon GA2 grips. I run these on every bike that I get. Um, I just feel that they're good balance. Sorry, these are the fat ones as well. Um, they are just a little bit bigger than normal grips uh, for my slightly larger hands. Um, but other than that, there's no other compromises. The saddle is new, it's an S Manny or Smanny, I'm not sure how you say it. I think it's just a prototype, it's just called the All Terrain. Maybe it's a full production model by this point. Um, not a seat that I would look at and think was comfy, it's quite flat and square, but turns out it's actually really quite comfy and uh, I liked it so much I got another one for my Claymore so that I had, again, contact points were the same. I suppose you could class the brakes as contact points, in fact very much so. Uh, now on my Claymore I went for the new Tech 4 V4s by Hope um, and I was extremely impressed with them. But they are maybe slightly overkill for a trail bike so I went for the E4s which have um, slightly narrower calipers. Uh, they don't take the bigger discs like I have in a Claymore and they have equal size pistons rather than having a in a, an unequal sized piston on the V4. I've also went for slightly smaller discs and these are the floating ones rather than the e-bike specific ones. I've got 200 front and rear. Uh, don't feel I need to go any bigger than that again because it's a trail bike. The one thing I will say about these is the V4s with the thicker e-bike discs on the Claymore are actually really quiet and don't have that hope squeal whereas these do and I cannot be dealing with that hope brake squeal, so I'll see what I can change to uh, alleviate that. That's quite annoying. Another thing that is the same as many bikes that I own, have owned recently is a Shimano XT 12 speed uh, drivetrain, including the cranks. And yeah, I mean, just they work. They're really, really robust. Uh, they're a good balance between weight and performance and uh, I can't really fault them. Uh, the SLX is fantastic as well, I've got that on my e-bike um, but I feel no need to go all the way up to XTR. Another thing I've kept that's the same in other bikes is oh, the uh, one-up components dropper post. 240mm post we can get on this large frame uh, and we can get it sunk all the way in but as you can see I can get it right in the, the perfect spot for riding up a hill and when it comes time to descend it's completely out of the way. This is another thing I love about these frames is the uh, low top tube height and ultimately the really good standover height you get from it. It's uh, It just makes the bike completely out of the way when things get steep and when you want to lean it over into corners. 
Um, the last thing you want is the bike hitting you uh, in inappropriate ways when you're trying to ride fast. And to round it all off, bottom bracket is by Hope, headset is by Hope as well. Generally I find spinny things that involve bearings, Hope make uh, superior long lasting components and uh, that's why I went for them. So yeah, that's my Highlander 2. I am very much looking forward to using this this year. Scotland in particular has had some excellent improvements and additions to their trail centres and bike parks with uh, Tarland and Glenlivet, just to name two of the biggest ones. And the need for a bike of this nature has become very prevalent and I am extremely glad that I have this bike and I'm looking forward to using it over the summer and for the years to come. And already it's... Uh, I've just had so much fun on it. Uh, obviously we'll have some first ride videos coming up soon, but I like it very, very much. Let me know if I've missed anything in the comments. Uh, I will have some additions coming in the future. Let me know what you think uh, if I sh that should change. Uh, and yeah, just let me know your thoughts.